Okay. A next interesting thing about this is the reception, the perception of these hormones, I'm sorry, of these pheromones are viewed as pleasant. Women prefer the odor of sweat with testosterone in it than sweat without. And men rate as more pleasant odors, pheromones from women when they're ovulating than when they are not. And this gives rise to a truly, truly bizarre finding out there in the field, which is what perfume is made of. Any guesses what perfume is typically made of? Huh? Musk. What's musk? It's fe oh, good guess. Animal pheromones. Yes, musk is animal pheromones. From which sex? Male. Yes. Perfumes are predominantly based on male sex pheromones. Perfumes are predominantly sweat-derived and testosterone-containing. I kid you not, Chanel No. 5, up until about 10 years ago, was made from the sweat of whipped male Abyssinian cats, until it was discovered that this is what it was, and animal rights groups started coming, oh my god, you put that on yourself, the sweat of male Abyssinian cats after they've been whipped. Yes, most of these perfumes are made of androgens, and there is a synthetic androgen called etolamide, which is the ingredient of all the cheap perfumes out there because you can make it synthetically. They are all derived from androgens. Okay. Anybody find that to be a little bit confusing? What sort of question does that raise? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Males. Why do, well, let me finally ask a question here. Men in the audience, how many of you actually like, like the smell of perfume? <laughs> I think we've learned something very important with February 14th being only eight months and nine months away or so. Okay, how many women in this room like the smell of perfume? <laughs> There's your answer. The next question is, when you look at the economics of perfumery, who buys perfume? And it's overwhelmingly women who buy it. When you look at the marketing of it, it is overwhelmingly women who buy perfume because men think the stuff smells like wild boars or like <laughs> the locker room and the guys there and suddenly you've got dopamine levels going down in their nucleus accumbens and all of that. Women mostly buy perfume and perfume is made out of male sweat reeking with androgens. Mm -mm. Sounds great, doesn't it? Okay. So you have these pheromones based on the stuff and pleasure based on it. Okay, more pheromonal stuff. What you wind up seeing then is this general pattern. You look at, within any given species, by gender, who is producing the pheromones and who is smelling it. Who's the recipient, who's the producer. And what you wind up seeing is, in general, females find female pheromones to be unpleasant and they are reproductively suppressive. In what way are they reproductively suppressive? They lower estrogen levels in some species. What we heard about already was the Wellesley effect. What is the Wellesley effect? Dominant females make other females ovulate the same time as them. What's that about that increases the likelihood that if there's only one male around, there are going to be one mating with him? It's a reproductive competitive strategy. So among females, pheromones are reproductively suppressive. Female pheromones, though, stimulate male reproductive systems very, very effectively. And it causes an increase in testosterone levels. It causes the pleasurable sense that we just heard about. It also gave rise to the most famous study ever published in science that was anonymous. And it's made even more interesting by the fact that everybody in the field knows who the author is, but nobody's allowed to say. And this was a guy about 20 years ago who was a wildlife zoologist who was working out in the Aleutians and doing something or other with elk out there and that sort of thing. And his pattern was every couple of weeks he would come back to Anchorage for a long weekend where he had a significant other who he stayed with there. And he sort of noticed that he felt much more androgenized when he was back in Anchorage for those few days than he was out in the bush. And he hypothesized, well, maybe I wonder if my testosterone levels are higher when I'm in Anchorage. Now, this guy happened not to be an endocrinologist and thus didn't want to do hormone stuff. And what he did instead was do an indirect assay for testosterone release, which is there is a fairly linear relationship between testosterone levels in the bloodstream and the rate at which beard hair grows. 
And this guy sat there, and he would shave every day and measure the shavings and weigh the stuff. And what you saw in the paper was a pattern like this. He'd go to Anchorage, and suddenly he's like sprouting beard hair all over his body. And he'd go back out in the bush again, and it would stop there. And what the studies have shown since then is this is pheromonal. Female pheromones in all sorts of species, including humans, stimulate the reproductive system, perceived as pleasurable, increase testosterone levels. Okay, meanwhile, down at the male end, if the male is the source of the pheromones and the female is the recipient, it stimulates the reproductive system. And the evidence for that is lots of different versions. The Wellesley effect, the second half of the Wellesley effect, dunk a male into the middle of that group of synchronized females, and everybody desynchronizes and shortens their cycles. Other examples, male pheromones and rodents will make females reach puberty at an earlier age. And this has been known for about 40 years. And that works quite readily. And farmers out will use male pheromones, it's called boar mate, to cause female pigs to ovulate and to reach puberty earlier. You can buy cans of this stuff and spray it all over your pigs out in the backyard, and you can push the ovulatory system to work faster that way. Meanwhile, male pheromones are perceived by males as being really unpleasant and decrease testosterone levels in all these rodent species. So we see this two by two design. Of course, what is superimposed on top of this, something you all know inside out from the sociobiology lectures, it's dependent on genetics. It's dependent on relatedness. None of this stuff works with a sibling or a close relative. Yeah.